the next module in this lecture is on applying machine learning, as we just kind of characterized it in this optimization framework, in the logical framework, to the prediction function that we constructed in the beginning, this you know, linear function, linear in the covariance matrix of some data. Um, the prediction function was basically just, uh, there's this linear function in there, um, you know, B plus um, theta in a product between some capital theta and some covariance matrix. That's, uh, you know, covariance matrix of some trial. Um, if you, uh, this is a vector um, writing style, by the way. If you are, s um, if you're uh, combining this with the logistic loss, so say, uh, you know, here's our cost function for some data matrix uh, or actually data um, tensor X, which contains a covariance matrices for every trial, um, and evaluates in effect the sum of this. And you have a label vector, uh, and you solve this, you are basically learning, you know, this theta matrix. M matrix, write, you can also write this all as vectors if you want to, but um, I would like to keep the parameter vector a, uh, sorry, the parameters a matrix because I want to apply a matrix penalty there. By the way, um, here's one little n n nifty caveat, and this is, there's this B, right, and the B doesn't show up here. Um, you can basically um, merge this bias value into your th parameter vector just by saying, you know, this is 1 plus data times theta, or uh, 1 times b plus data times theta. You can always append a 1 at the end of your data and say, OK, my parameter vector is one more element. And so that's going to be effectively the, 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 the slot for the bias value. So that's uh, just a notational convenience. So you don't have to drag this b around all the time. But it can be practical to keep it separate if you don't want to apply certain kinds of penalties to the B that you want to apply to the other parameters. Anyway, um, so if we just did that part, we would probably overfit because we have too many parameters, covariance way too large. And so we need a penalty. We could, we could use any of the previous ones. Um, but there is a special one, and it's this one, which has a nice property that I'll talk about. What this, here's the regularization parameter, it's just a scalar trade-off. It's a sum um, uh, of, of, you know, k to, to the rank of this matrix values. And this sigma k is defined as the kth singular value of your weight matrix. And um, just a little background, uh, a rank 5 matrix, say, has five singular values and the rest is all zeros, um, you know, the other singular values. So um, uh, it turns out if you apply, and they are non-negative also, if you apply this kind of um, penalty to the singular values of a matrix, it acts in a sense like a sparsity-inducing norm on, on the rank of the matrix. Although there is a little, you know, um, it doesn't directly optimize the number of things. It also drives, um, you know, weights down. So, um, uh, there's a little bit of discrepancy. But ultimately, um, if you apply this penalty and say, um, my singular value spectrum of the matrix is sparse, uh, you will end up with a matrix that has few singular values. And consequently, that is low rank. And so you can write it as a sum, the parameter vector that you learned. You can write it as a sum of a small number of rank 1 matrices, logically, right? Um, this is maybe rank 3 or so. And it turns out that um, you can get then go on and interpret this. So you learn this weight matrix uh, in this particular function form applied to the covariance matrix. And it has multiple rank 1 terms and so on. You can interpret these things as, as um, equivalent spatial filters. Why is this? Because of this construction that we went through before, um, where you say, well, this matrix can be uh, understood as a sum of multiple rank 1 slices, each one kind of is given rise by spatial filter and is sort of weighted. So um, in, in effect, if you apply this kind of penalty to this kind of predictive model, you will learn a small number of spatial filters um, which pick up some oscillatory process um, and some associated weights for these resultant variances, um, which is you know, giving you um, maximum predictive accuracy when it comes to your label on the other end of the equation. So um, 
that is a very practical thing. And because, um, oh, because we are having this tunable parameter, which tunes the complexity of the model in a sense, we are effectively able to learn a variable number of spatial filters. And the right number is uh, basically optimized by, by this cross-validation. If you, if you search over the right lambda, um, you learn just as many spatial filters and therefore sources that you can afford to fit using the data that you have in a sense. So, um, and that's um, the end of this story and prepares uh, our next little journey. <laughs>